Good day students. Welcome to our lesson this week in general mathematics. Our topic for today is solving real life problems involving functions. Many processes studied in the physical and social sciences involve understanding how one quantity is related to another quantity. Determining the function that describes the dependence of one quantity to another is called mathematical modeling. Modeling real-world problems, especially those that require optimization, is one of the important applications of the study of functions. Let me share you the 17 equations that changed the world, according to Ian Stewart. First is the Pythagorean Theorem, the Logarithms by John Napier, the Equation in Calculus, the Limit and Differentiation Rules by Newton, the Law of Gravity by Isaac Newton as well, the square root of minus 1 by Euler. Euler's formula for polyhedra. Normal distribution by C.F. Gauss. Wave equation by J.D. Albert. The Fourier transform by Fourier. The neighbor Stokes equation by C. Neighbor and G. Stokes. Maxwell equations by John Maxwell. Second law of thermodynamics by L. Boltzmann. Relativity, the E equals mc squared by Albert Einstein. Schrodinger's equation by E. Schrodinger. Information Theory by C. Shannon Chaos Theory by Robert May and the Black Scholes Equation by F. Black and M. Scholes So there is a And God said, let there be light and there was light So I guess you have seen this in the internet or in social media. These are Maxwell equations of classical thermodynamics in integral form. They are one way of describing light and other forms of electromagnetic radiation. Now, so let us try to create a function to solve a certain problem. So, this will be uh, real life problems and let's try to solve them using equations or functions. Example 1, a book of pie store can produce a book of pie at 95 pesos. It is estimated that if the selling price of the book of pie is x pesos, then the number of book of pie sold each day is 1000 minus x. Letter A express the daily profit of the store as a function of x and b use the result in a to determine the daily profit given that the selling price is 160 pesos so for the solution so let uh, p of x for profit c of x for total cost and r of x for the total revenue so r of x or the function for the total revenue is equal to x times 1000 minus x because you need to multiply the number of book of pie sold each day and the selling price of the book of pie. Then for the uh, total cost c of x equals 95 pesos times 1000 minus x because you need to multiply the production costs of each book of pie and the number of book of pie sold each day. So in order for you to solve for the profit, 
So P of X equals R of X minus C of X. The profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. Hence, uh, P of X is equal to R of X minus C of X. So let us uh, just substitute the values of P or of R of X and C of X. So now we're going to have P of X equals X times 1000 minus X minus 95 times 1000 minus X. So we can express this into factored form. So P of X equals 1000 minus X times X minus 95. So this is our function for the profit. So uh, let us continue our solution for letter B. So the selling price is 160 pesos. So X is equal to 160. So using our equation for profit, just substitute the value of X, which is 160. We're going to have P of X equals 1000 minus 160 times 160 minus 95. So P of X is equal to 840 times 65, which is 54,000. So the daily profit is 54,000 pesos. If the selling price of each book of buy is 160 pesos, and if the production cost of each book of buy is 95 pesos. For number two, Emma and Brandon drive away from a campground Emma went north and Brandon went east. Emma's speed is 40 km per hour and Brandon's speed is 75 km per hour. For letter A, express the distance between the cars as a function of time t. Then for letter B, find the domain of the function. So it will be better if we are going to illustrate this problem. So there you go. So that's the campground and Emma's direction is going north and uh, Brandon's direction is going east. So the distance between them, so we can uh, use the distance formula or since it is illustrated as a right triangle, we can apply the Pythagorean theorem. So for letter A, so let us use or apply the Pythagorean theorem. So D, T squared is equal to 40T squared plus 75T squared. So T of T squared is equal to 1,600T squared plus 5,625T squared. So we squared 40T and 75T respectively. So just add those two, we're going to have D of T square is equal to 7,225 T square. So let us continue. Uh, X get the root of both sides of the equation. So you're going to have D of T equals 85 T. So this is our function. Then for letter B, the independent variable of the equation is the time t. Since time cannot be negative, therefore the domain is given by t is greater than or equal to 0 or if it is expressed in interval form from 0 to positive infinity where 0 is included. So this is the domain. For example number 3, a rectangular field is to be pens along the bank of a river and no pens is required along the river. The material for the pens or the material for the pens costs 8 pesos per running foot for two ends and 12 pesos per running foot for the side parallel to the river. 3600 pesos worth of pens is to be used. So letter A express the area of the field as a function of x and letter B find the domain of the resulting function. So let us illustrate here. Uh, 
given that uh, the two sides x are parallel and y is the other side that's the reverse so there's no pens needed for that so for the solution so to get the perimeter of the pens that's 8x plus 8x plus 12y equals 3600 okay so 12y because uh 12 pesos per running foot for the side parallel to the river and 8x and 8x because 8 pesos per running foot for the two ends so just uh solve for y 12y equals 3600 minus 16x so y is equal to 300 minus 4 over 3x So, for the continuation to get the area, so the area is equal to length times width. So, in based on our figure, we can say that the area is equal to x times y. So, let us express the area as a of x. So, a of x equals x times y, then substitute the value of y. a of x equals x times 300 minus 4 over 3x. Or a of x equals 300x minus 4 over 3x squared. So this is the function of the area in terms of x. So to solve for letter B, uh, let us solve it first. So 300x minus 4 over 3x squared greater than 0. Or uh, let us multiply both sides of the inequality by negative 1. So the inequality symbol will be reversed. So that will be negative 300x plus 4 over 3x squared less than 0. Then 4 over 3x squared minus 300x less than 0. 4x squared minus 900x less than 0. Then it will, it will become x squared minus 225x less than 0. So factor x factor out x that will be x times x minus 225 less than 0 so x is less than 225 or uh, since uh, we're talking about length so there's no negative uh, length so the value of x will is between 0 to 225 express in interval form and that's the domain now let's have a recall on a uh, about uh, variation so we call it a direct variation or directly proportional if this is the case a function f of x is said to be directly proportional to a variable x if f of x is equal to k x, where k is a non-zero constant called the constant of variation or the constant of proportionality. In general, f of x is said to be directly proportional to the nth power of x if f of x is equal to k times x to the n, where n is greater than zero. So, for example, the approximate weight of a person's muscles is directly proportional to his or her body weight. If a person weighs 68 kilograms, then his or her muscles weigh approximately 27 kilograms. So, for letter A, express a person's muscles weight in terms of body weight as a function of X. Then for letter B, find the approximate muscle weight of a person weighing 50 kilograms. So for our solution, uh, let us use this function, f of x equals k times x because based on our problem, it was stated that uh, the weight of a person's muscle is directly proportional to his or her body weight. So that's direct variation. So you have studied this, I think, in your grade 9 mathematics. So you Please uh, have a review about variation. So let us just substitute uh, 27 
that's the value of f of x and the value of x is 68 so that will become 27 equals k times 68 now let's solve for k so k is equal to 27 over 68 that's the constant of variation or the constant of proportionality hence f of x is equal to 27 over 68x okay so this is the uh, function of x representing a person's muscle weight in terms of body weight as a function of x so for the solution uh, let us make use of our obtained function f of x equal 27x over 68 if x is equal to 50 then uh, f of x is equal to 27 over 68 times 50 so that's equal to f of x equals uh, 1350 over 68 or 19 and 29 over 34 kilograms so this is our answer in letter b so we also have the uh, inverse variation or inversely proportional a function f of x is said to be inversely proportional to a variable x if f of x is equal to k over x where k is an unzero constant called the constant of variation or the constant of proportionality. In general, f of x is said to be inversely proportional to the n power of x if f of x is equal to k over x to the n, where n is greater than zero. So we also have this uh, joint variation. So jointly proportional. A variable z is said to be inversely proportional to variables x and y if z is equal to kxy, where k is an unzero constant called the constant of variation or the constant of proportionality. So more generally, a uh, variable c is c is said to be jointly proportional to the n power of x and m power of y if z is equal to k x to the n, y to the m, where m and n are greater than 0. So for example, number 5, for an electric cable of fixed length, the resistance is inversely proportional to the square of the diameter of the cable. So uh, inversely proportional, so we will be using inverse variation here. So letter A, suppose the cable of fixed length is 0.5 cm in diameter and has a resistance of 1 ohm, express the resistance as a function of the diameter. Then letter B, what is the resistance of a cable of fixed length having a diameter of 2 3rd cm? So for letter A, let f of x be the resistance in ohms of a cable having a fixed length and x cm be the diameter of the cable. So as since given is 0.5 or 1 half, so x is equal to 1 half and f of x is equal to 1. Thus, f of x equals k over x squared. So just substitute the uh, values of x and f of x respectively. So we have here uh, 1 equals k over 1 half squared. So that will become 1 equals k over 1 fourth. So just uh, manipulating the equation, we're going to obtain k equals 1 fourth as our constant of variation or constant of proportionality. Then our function, when you substitute k, it will be f of x equals 1 over 4x squared. So this is our function. So for letter B, if x is equal to 2 thirds, then just use the obtained function if f of 2 thirds, 2 thirds equals 1 over 4 times the square of 2 thirds. So the result will be 9 over 16 ohm. So when you are solving a problem class, please do not forget the unit of measurement or uh, just or label your answer label what it is if it is a uh, resistance okay if, if you will be solving money problems so don't forget the 
the symbol for currency if your answer is an amount of money okay so now I know you're very excited for this for the practice exercises so number one a right circular cylinder of height h and radius r is inscribed in a right circular cone with a height of 10 feet and a base of 6 feet so for letter A, express the height H of the cylinder as a function of R. Letter B, express the volume V of the cylinder as a function of R also. Then letter C, express the volume H of the cylinder as a function of H. So for number 2, the volume of a cylinder is jointly proportional to the square of its radius and to its height. Its volume is 942 cubic centimeters when its height is 3 centimeters and its radius is 10 centimeters. The proportionality constant is k equals 3.14. So for letter A, what will be the radius if the volume is doubled? And for letter B, what will happen to the volume if the radius is halved while the height is quadrupled? And for number 3, an open top box with a square base is to be constructed from two types of materials, one for the bottom and one for the sides. The volume of the box is to be 9 cubic feet. The cost of the material for the bottom is 4 pesos per square feet. And the cost for the material for the sides is 3 pesos per square feet. Let x be the length of the edge of the square base and y be the height of the open box. So letter A, express the height of the, of the box in terms of x. And letter B, express the cost of the materials in terms of the edge x of the base. So uh, here are some variation problems. Number four, the pressure P at the bottom of the swimming pool varies directly as the depth D of the water. If the pressure is 125 Pascal when the water is 2 meters deep, find the pressure when it is 4.5 meters deep. Then uh, number 5, Joseph is figuring out a way to reach Baguio at the shortest possible time. Using his car, he can reach Baguio in 6 hours at an average speed of 70 kilometers per hour. How fast should he drive in order to reach Baguio in 5 hours? But remember class, ha? Huh? Uh, drive safely, okay? So I hope uh, Joseph can reach Baguio safe and sound. Still follow the traffic rules. The number 6, the mass of a rectangular sheet of wood varies jointly as the length and the width. When the length is 20, centimeters and the width is 10 centimeters, the mass is 200 grams. Find the mass when the length is 15 centimeters and the width is 10 centimeters. So that's your uh, practice exercises items for this week. Enjoy learning and best of luck. So I hope you are already conditioned, ready and prepared to answer those problems. I guess this is your mood right now. So always remember class, do mathematics to learn mathematics. Practice, improve, and stay curious. Keep safe, stay healthy, and God bless everyone. So see you next week for our next lesson.